Rosie, cooking a big slab of meat is what I do best. I'm an expert at it. And that mash next to it just allows you to soak up all those juices and just fills you up. That's what I'm... I'm almost foaming at the mouth thinking about this one. Now, I'm just going to make a real simple braised chuck. And what I'm going to do is open this up. Grass-fed Australian beef. And this is the chuck, which is just behind the shoulder here. Muscles that do a lot of work, they need a lot of low, slow cooking. And there's no one lower and slower than me to cook it. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is season it up because meat loves salt, salt loves meat. You need plenty of salt on there because that's what brings out the flavour. I say it again and again and again because it is so important. There's no point cooking any meat unless you've got some salt on it. And, of course, pepper. Plenty, plenty of back pepper. Now, this is really hot. I know it's on flat out, so what I'm going to do is pop this into the pan. Already we've got some sizzle, and I like to do it this way because I can be assured... Slow cook is this... what you like, though, isn't it? I do. You're good at it. Especially with this cut of meat, because these mussels do a lot of work, a lot of low, slow cookery gives it time to break down, become nice and tender and become flavoursome. Now, what I'm going to do is just give you a turnaround here, just so you can see what's happening. Yep. Already we've got some colouring action going on, a bit of caramelisation, as they like to say. Now, over here, I want you to cut these mushrooms straight in half. You got it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to cut these onions. Now, with the onions, I'm going to keep them quite large. Normally, when I would cut an onion like this, I would cut it nice and fine. But this is going to take about two and a half hours to cook. So nice big chunks of veggies will be soft enough and be delicious enough by the time it gets to that two hours. And, of course, the celery. I'm pretty good with celery. I just run it all down the middle here. And when you are doing celery, you've got to make sure that you wash it. Right down the end here is where you'll get bits of dirt. Yeah. So underneath the tap and give it a bit of a rub so it, uh, so it gets all that dirt and stuff away. Now, I'll cut that all up there like that. I've also got some garlic. This is beautiful fresh garlic, and what I'm going to do, Rosie, is just rough chop it all the way through here. Beautiful Australian fresh garlic. It's new season Lovely. stuff, which is great. Now, we're going to come back over here. I'll just turn this over, and you can see that's browning off beautifully. We're going to add some butter, because butter is what makes everything taste delicious. And you can see already, as soon as the butter hits the pan, everything starts to soften up and slow down just that little bit. You could just use olive oil, could you? You could use olive yeah. oil, but nothing beats the, the flavour and the texture of the butter going in there. In goes some thyme as well. The celery goes in here as well. In goes the onions. And slide those mushrooms over here, Rosie. Look at that. Mushrooms go in there as well. Yeah. And we're just going to let all this sweat off. I've got the wooden spoon here. I'm just going to turn that round for a bit. And all we're going to do, Rosie, is just soften this up just a little bit for a couple of minutes, and then we'll add the olives and the bay leaves. Rosie, after about five minutes, you can see it's softened down beautifully. Yep. I'm also going to add some lovely red wine. Yep. And I've got some other liquids here. I've got some tomato passata. In that goes and some sherry. In goes the sherry there. Now, I've got some stock on hand just to add some liquid because I'm going to place the lid on this and let this simmer away. It takes about two hours, really, really gently. I think it's starting to thicken up too much. I'll add some of this stock just to thin it down a little bit nice. so I've got a real nice saucy consistency at the end. Now, I'm going to leave this over here and we're going to come back over here and what I've got is the Swedes, the potatoes and the turnips. So what we're going to do is peel these now and pop them into the pot. And just about when that beef is cooked, we're going to turn the gas on, boil these up and we'll have them ready to uh, put with our cream and butter and make some delicious, creamy, buttery, sweet potato and turnip, which I think will go really well with this beef dish. What do you think? Oh, I think so. As you can see, I've got Rosie very busy working her way. She's mashing the sweet, the turnip and potato. It's cooked all the way through. Lots of salt in there to make sure it tastes good. I've got a pot with some butter in it, and I'm going to put a little bit more. You can't have buttery, creamy mash unless you have plenty of butter and cream. So in it goes. And all I need to do is put the sweet, the turnip, and the potato into here. Now, the best way to incorporate all of these things is to stir it around like this nice and gently so it all flows through. All the fat and cholesterol, all the nasty stuff will rise into the atmosphere and repair the ozone layer. Have you heard that before? 
More people need to listen to you, Adrian. Exactly. More I'm people. full of all these interesting facts. Now, what I'm going to do is grab that plate over there and I'm going to pop some, uh, some of the mash onto the middle here. I do love Sweden turnips. Have a look at that. Is that gorgeous? It's just bubbling away. It's reduced down nicely till it's nice and thick and all those bits of meat have cooked till they're nice and tender. I'm going to take it off there like that. Pop it onto the side of it. That is an NRL AFL player portion right there, isn't it? Exactly. Well, this is something you might share with a couple of people with a salad. And what I'll do is I'll pop that in the middle there, sprinkle some chives on top because we love lots of greenery there. Rosie, grab the cutlery for me, will you? That's it. Now, what I'm going to do Come and is... taste your creation. Now, I know the, the mash is the hero of today, so we do need to try that. But for me, it's all about the meat. The meat is the most important part. Beautiful, tender meat. Just have a look how that falls apart, Rosie. Just. I think there, there isn't something better than having a bit of protein and mash. I know. It's OK. It's at moments it's like gorgeous. this when I'm glad that you don't eat meat because <laughs> I'm going to polish this off. I'm going to eat every single bit of it. Do you like it? Do you oh, like the sweet? The, the mashed potato is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. You did a great job on that one. Thank you.